channel. I have been looking for a chair for the nursery for the longest time. I didn't really want to go online to buy like a $200 chair or anything like that. So I take my occasional trip to restore Habitat for Humanity and like Goodwill and stuff to see if I may find something that will work for like a project chair. And today I just so happened to go to um, restore and I immediately saw this chair. This one that I'm sitting on, even though it looks nice-ish, <laughs> um, it really isn't. It looks like it has seen better days. So I took my little butt to Joanne's and I went to get some fabric because I'm gonna reupholster it. So um, this is a little over four and a half yards. And it said it was $9 a yard, but when she um, when she total, totaled it up, it actually came to $15 for this all this fabric like that's amazing this is not cheap fabric and believe it or not I actually spent more on the trim than I than I did on the fabric it was crazy so I just got this really nice braided trim I got a little over nine yards maybe like nine and a half yards in here each yard was like 399 but then I had a 40% discount I don't know exactly how much that is you guys can do the math for me I also got um, a zipper and this fabric fusion and this is so I can glue the trim once I'm done. I don't know where my receipt went but in total I spent about $40, $45 or something like that for the trim, the fabric, the glue, and the zipper so that's not bad. And then this chair cost $30. Better so than spending $200 for you know a newer chair I guess. <laughs> and you guys know me, I can't do that. I can't do that. Before I get into like the whole DIY thing, I'm gonna show you this chair. Okay, so honestly from far away, it doesn't look too bad, but once you actually get closer to the chair, you can see that the bottom is like kind of yellow. Well, I mean, it might be the lighting, but so I think whoever did this, um, had this chair before, redid it because I know this is not the original color. I can tell that it was, um, made to look distressed and then if you see here why would you use blue thread on a white fabric <laughs> i don't know and then it looks like they did it by hand or something because that is just crappy stitching um so even though i i actually really do like this fabric because it's nice and cushy and i don't know it's it's pretty um i just don't think i can salvage it excuse me little lady and then if you see here, oh, <laughs> this is already coming apart. So yeah, this is all frayed. Uh, this really can't be salvaged. I mean, again, it's, it's really nice fabric, but it just, it's, it's done. It's done for. So I'm going to redo this whole thing. I'm starting this project by removing all the fabric, trim, and staples from the chair. After I take off all the trim from the fabric, I'm going to take this as a sample to cut my own pieces from my own fabric. really sure where this chair was or where it came from so I made sure that I wiped it down um, made sure to clean it really well and then I didn't show this part but I actually also vacuumed the bottom part of it the back of this chair is really flat so I took some brad nails some of this buffalo snow that I bought at Goodwill for $2.99 and also some batting and I just put enough on there to just stuff the back and make it a little bit more fluffy and cushiony um, that way when I sit in it it's more comfortable than just a flat back. After putting a good amount of stuffing on there I put the batting over it and I just went in with my stapler gun or my nail gun and put the brad nails right into the wood of the back of the chair. 
and then I cut the excess off the ends. Now as you can see it's nice and fluffy and cushiony and not that flat back that it had before. I took some of that batting that was already on the back of the chair originally and I used it, I used it as a stencil to cut my own fabric. Then I just took my trim and also my fabric fusion and just placed it all around all along the edges of the chair and this glue usually takes about two to four hours to dry so I tried to pat it gently because the the liquid would come through the trim but it's okay because it dries clear and flexible. I also pinned the trim down just to help it set a little bit better and then I took the remaining pieces of fabric that were on the chair originally, I used them as stencils and just drew out on my own fabric and cut them out. For the armrest, I cut out a couple pieces of batting of the same size and then I also used that buffalo snow to stuff in between just to give it a little bit more cushion. So once I had that and my fabric, I placed it onto the armchair and I nailed it just like I did with the other pieces of fabric. to do this one in sections so I'm gonna do one length right here one here one here one here and then one all around like that I'm gonna assume that it's five inches thick all across so but I'm just just to make sure on this back part because I'm gonna put a zipper on the on the cover it's gonna it's gonna go like that so I'm gonna want to cut this piece of fabric that I'm gonna cut here in half so I'm gonna make it a little bit wider because I want to make a seam on it so I'm gonna give it like a quarter inch so this one's gonna be bigger than the other sides
What I did right here was take that uh, back piece where I'm gonna put the zipper and basically I cut it in half and then I folded like a little like under a quarter of an inch and I'm putting a stitch right here and then the zipper will be going underneath like that and then that way this is this has like a seam and it's not like frayed like that all right so this is something that I've never done before myself so as you're watching me this is the first time I do it so as you can see I have my two pieces from that back part I did my seam stitch right there now I'm gonna put them together and as you can see they're not perfect it's a little jagged and then I'm gonna remember that there's gonna be half an inch allowance on here for the um, when I attach it to the other pieces of fabric so I'm gonna remember that and basically let's see half an inch okay so kind of marked more or less where that seam's gonna be and now I'm going to put my zipper face down because obviously once you turn it around the zipper part is gonna be on the outside um, so I'm just gonna put it all along this the bottom seams here and before I start placing it like all the way across I'm gonna take my pins and just start pinning the zipper to the fabric so that's all pinned now when you turn it around see the zipper is hidden inside and then um, this is where you're gonna pull it out so once it's zipped once it's sewed on there you'll be able to kind of open that up and see the zipper So now I'm just going to take all of the ends that I had originally cut. These are going to be all the sides on that cushion. And I'm just going to start sewing away until I have one round piece and then I'll sew the top parts on top of them. Sorry you guys, I always have some type of music, mostly oldies um, blasting in the background so if you hear that. But real quick, I'm going to do half an inch seams on all of these because I cut them. I cut all the pieces about an inch longer to give it that half inch seam, so that's what I'm going to be doing. I always do a back stitch. I do a front stitch and then a back stitch so it entwines and it um, closes itself so it doesn't uh, unthread. That makes sense. those smaller parts on the on the cushion like on the edges I went ahead and attached them and this is what it's gonna look like so once the cushion is in there they're gonna fit perfectly inside for this part, I traced the actual cushion onto my fabric, and then I also marked half an inch over that line because that's how much more fabric I needed around it. That way when I pin it, it gives me a little extra room to sew. All right, so all of my pieces, well, not the bottom piece, but um, the top piece and the side pieces are pinned. And honestly, you guys, I've never done this before, so I have no clue what I'm doing. I am just, <laughs> I just thought I would go for it and, you know, we'll see how it turns out. So now I'm just going to take it off and I'm going to go sew this top, top part real quick.
right, all finished. So it's definitely not perfect, but it serves its purpose and I think it looks really pretty. So And this is maybe sticking out a little bit more because I put extra cushion on that back but because before it was just completely flat and I wanted to have a little support on there too. So this is why this is sticking out just a little bit. But I really like the material of the fabric. And again, since I made this, if I get this dirty, I can go ahead and take it off and wash it. So that is it for this video, you guys. Again, thank you so much for watching. I hope that it gave you a little bit of inspiration to just step out of your comfort zone. Like I mentioned, I have never done anything like this before. And considering that, I actually really love how this turned out. And I like that I did it on a budget and didn't spend hundreds of dollars on a chair. So with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you leave a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, leave any comments down below, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.